Hi, my name is Meg and today I'm going to do a pumpkin for you on Illustrator. Alright, so for texture I might add a few knot holes. So a quick and easy way to do that is to make an ellipse and then you make another ellipse on top of it. Actually you might make it about the same size. Okay, and then select them both and you get this nice little leaf shape in between. Cut, click off, little arrow. Actually, I might keep that one again. So, good shapes. Okay, if you select an object and both parts of it, both sections, light up, okay, you come over to your little, your direct selection tool, your little arrow, or white arrow, and you can just pick, if you click off and get on again, you can just pick the section that you want. If you want to move the whole object then you've selected that but that's not saying move it. This is still the vertice or the anchor point selection tool so you need to go back to your big arrow and then pull it across and that'll stop any problems. Okay so this shape is a nice eye and this shape um, it might be good to cut little eyes, at, uh, little knot holes out of the wood. Okay, so it's my object and I would like it to be this color scheme so I can just go straight down to eyedropper and pick black. Okay, and having knot holes is going to make it look all that much more creepy. Alright, so make it them a little bit irregular. Again, we're trying to force perspective. Okay, some spooky eyes. Don't want them to look too perfect, so I'm going to flip this one. Uh, transform, reflect, vertical. Alrighty. Okay, so maybe a few sort of wood shapes around that could be good. Okay, you could use a curved line, but. Um, Another way to do it is to make something like this, but use longer circle, longer ellipses. So I'm going to put these two together, cut. And now I've got my curvy line. Again, way too big. Okay, I want it to be flatter, so I'm just going to play with these. Okay, control C, control V because it's an awesome shape. Oh, he's got eyebrows. Now, I might make a smaller one in there. And then I'm going the same way as the knot hole here. Not so big. No pun intended. Maybe another one. Now for what I can see, these are too dark and they should be a darker grey or a blue grey. But because I'm going to add some more shadow later, I'll leave them as they are for the moment. Okay, transform, reflect again, but this time horizontal, because I want them to flip um, on the opposite axis, I suppose. So what sort of seems to move around those knot holes. So we want something like that. That should do. We don't want too much because otherwise it's going to detract from our pumpkin and he should really be the centre of attention. Okay, now I've been creeping up the side of my skies. It's been getting a little bit higher than my, my porch banister rail. So Okay, so now we have these areas in the middle. We've got we're going to have planks coming this way. Now they're going to be thinner towards the back, again perspective, and being cartooning we tend to force it a little bit. Cheat is the other word that that is called. Okay, so I'm going to do, I can actually not worry about hitting my pumpkin and get a much neater finish if I send it to the back like I did before. 
Okay, it's probably a bit too big. Alright, so I need this colour. Okay, and I'm going to go Object, Arrange, Centre Back, and then I'll just bring him forward a bit. There we go. And then I don't have to worry about the edges on the pumpkin. I can see I've got a tiny little vertex there. Little artifact. Oh, may not be anything I can pick up at this point. I'll just keep an eye on it. Alrighty, so we want another one of those. Control C, Control V. This one's going to need to be bigger. Oh, that's not meant to happen. Oh, what is it about photo uh, Illustrator? I've done that again. What is it about Illustrator that when you're trying to click on the path, it'll tell you there's no path to be seen, even though it's just right there. But you can manage to pick up the curl your um, curve your edges so easily when you don't seem to be anywhere near it. Okay, so the floorboards are going to go down as well. But what we want to do is show that it goes back. I'll show you a trick in a second. So this section is going to go up and that's right there. Okay, so what you should have is this little corner coming in because that's a plank. So what we can do is add some vertices there. So we're going to need one for the corner, one for the middle corner, and one for where it comes out. One, two, three. Okay, and then we pick the middle one and pull it back. Pick the middle one. I can make this one better. Okay. these two to work together. So that gives us an idea of a plank being there. Okay, so this one I didn't finish adjusting. It's going to have to meet up a bit better and I'm going to have to send it to the back. Pardon me. <coughs> Bring forward, forward, forward. Okay, now that I'm up close, I want to change this, make it a little bit more pronounced. There we go. Okie dokie. So this one needs to be closer to that corner. Make it not too perfect. It's got to look old and shabby to look scary. This one is not even meeting the other. That's better. Each one is going to be bigger, getting closer to you. So Maybe about there. Still your colour. Uh, maybe. Okay, now we're going to adjust him. Again, we want him to look nice and irregular. Might add another anchor point. There we go. Alrighty, so now I just have to play with this one. Here we up and add another. Oops. Okay. So this one is going to be similar.
Alrighty. Yeah, that looks about right. Now, I have to select all of it. Send it to the back. Bring it forward. Oops, you press control, not shift. It's note to the wise. Hi. Time for a coffee break, I feel. One of those. One of those. It's going to go back a little bit so we'll take it up rather than being parallel to the plane. Now, we'll just take this here for the moment, but we're going to have to play with this. So, we've cut this out to there, but this is laying on top. So, just to be easy, let's just cut that out there and then get rid of these anchor points. Okay, so we've got the same sort of look. So let's just zoom out. And that's looking pretty good. We've only done one side, but it's all good so far. So now we need to match up the other side. Reasonably convincing. make sure I match it up because otherwise your eyes play tricks on you. Select the whole thing, edit, object, arrange, center back, just bring it forward, there we go. There's another one but you would be able to see a little bit there so I'll just steal this one and change the angle. It's going to be closer here than there because this is because the weird angle we're working on this is still closer to us so these this part of the plank will be narrower all right so let's line it up mostly and is that, that's not too bad all right and send it to the back bring it forward a few layers Oops, if you press shift, there we go. So I'm happy with that. Could actually be a little bit narrower. There we go. Doesn't detract too much from the pumpkin then. Okay, so we're actually short one here. I'll do that and then we'll go for a break. So big selection. Let's grab that one. Change the angle again, a bit more narrow further away. If you get something like that, um, rather than just trying to shrink it in, just come along and add an anchor point to at the point that your background and the shape intersect. Here and here. It's a really quick way to tidy things up. Come along, delete anchor point tool and delete, delete, ah, oh, fight with Illustrator a few times. Okay, now I'm going to have to move it across to find the other one. And there we go. So, might need a small adjustment there, but more or less. Let's cut it off at the edge. Okay, so we've fleshed out a fair bit of our picture so far. Actually, while I'm on the cleaning up I might just take that edge off using the same trick. There we go. Okay so now I'm going to add a few more shadows around it to make it look really spooky and I might make everything a little bit more irregular just for the same effect. Okay I'm going to start looking at some shading so I'll start with my pumpkin just because I feel like it. <laughs> what I'm going to do is select the whole shape, copy and paste, and then pick out a slightly darker colour. Okay, and this is going to be 
a good trick. Right. So I've basically masked the whole pumpkin. Now I'm going to come along and erase sections around about where the light will be, where the eyes I mean would be, so the light would be. Gotta make sure you get all those little bits. So this could be lighter. This hopefully will give the illusion of being a light source. But the only problem, as you can see, that it does create a lot of vertices. So that's a clever technique. You usually have to come back later and clean it up. It doesn't matter that I haven't got the exact right colour, it's probably a little bit too dark, but just start with something and then you can add to it. Oh, I've missed a bit here. Get rid of these extra vertices. And if we keep that sort of same malevolent shape in the erasing, it First of all, nice and simple, it'll take out some of these extra vertices, anchor points. But it'll also help keep that malevolent feeling of a pumpkin. It's very fun. Something like that's good. Okay, so like I said, it, there are lots of vertices in there that we don't need, so we can come in and take a whole bunch out and be told that we're not hitting any. Okay, this gives us a bit more predictability. Just keeps us more in control, keep it simple and tidy. The other thing you can do is pick the path and simplify the path. But I'm going to keep some of these knobbly bits. Whoops. Okay, nice and regular, looks a bit malevolent. Okay, well now we need to bring that stalk back towards the front. So object, arrange, bring to front. I'm going to do the same thing for it. So control C, control V, and place it over the top. Okay. Um, so for this, I just want to maybe have a few highlights. I'm going to colour it a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow because the light coming off the eyes is more yellow. Now I'm going to erase it. So this would probably be in shadow. This would be behind. That's where it's going to bend over. That's probably right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right, but that's only given our pumpkin two colors. So we might want it to have a little bit more depth. So I'm thinking I might do the same again. Make it orange but dark. Oh, a bit more red. Something like that. Okay, so let's erase it again. I don't remember which program I'm using. Alright, so if I take this off, I should get a light, a medium, and a dark like that. Now here we can play more with that original shape. Actually that's not quite right. Go down a bit more. That's about right. Okay, so let's get that medium in. If you make a mistake, it's really not the end of the world. That's what anchor points are for. So here I'm trying to get the big shape of the pumpkin. So I'm following more the curve rather than the light from the features, as I was last time. Because it's a round object, I don't want there to be too many areas, or preferably no areas, where it goes from that lighter colour to the darker colour, it should always go through an intermediary. That's just what round objects do. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, ooh. That's good, I like it. Uh, However, I seem to have a very thick weight. Let's take that down a bit. And I've got an artifact there. Okay, now I've kept the, um, the black line on everything. We don't really need to. We can take it off and just use the contrast and the colors to do the work. Okay, so the light's coming from the front, which is going to mean it's probably going to make a bit of a circular shadow. So what I'm going to do is put the shadow where I think it'll be. Pick a colour. Let's go with the blue. Mm, a bit darker again. And okay, so one thing I can do with this is change the opacity. So at the moment it's 100%. If I change it down to 50, we can still see quite a lot behind it. If we change it to say 80 or so, it's going to be um, much more dramatic, shall we put? <laughs> okay, so I want to cut that out. So again there's two things I can do. One is just to add a an anchor point or I can cut it using another object. I'll just go with the anchor point. I should be paying more attention to where I'm putting things. Live and learn. Okay. Okay and delete and delete. 
oops, deleted one too many. But now I'm just going to change it using my handles. Two anchor points for a corner. One to go that way. One to go that way. Just not going to need to go back. Somewhere in there, somewhere. That should be good. Okay, instead I've got to cut it off at the top, make it nice and neat. So we'll go one, two to be easier. And delete. Now that we've used those ones. Okay. Right, so we need to send it back now. Object arrange, center back and bring it a little bit forward. There we go. So it looks spooky. Okay, so that's one important rule in art is that if you want something to look brighter, you put darker things next to it, and as you can just see. Okay, I want to put a little bit of texture in, so I'm actually going to do a bit of a cheat here, I think. And I might make a little triangle to sort of bring it in so it looks like a board. I need to match the blue colour and take out any border. There we go. Okay, so I was going to do a knot hole for a similar sort of thing. adjust that for perspective a little bit make it further down okay so I think I might take my water out of these there we go um, of course I can brush it I can put it into Photoshop and brush them and that will make the um, give it a softer effect if I want to but I'm quite liking the dramatic at the moment I'm thinking with this instead of having black I might go with a darker yellow sort of halfway between the orange of the outside that's looking a bit heinous <laughs> maybe a bit darker mm. yeah that's working. Alright, this and this also do not need a border. Okay. This it's getting a bit of a the other colours coming through, so I might just enlarge it the tiniest bit. Get rid of that. I've got an artifact over here I'm not keen on. Separating from the rest of the herd, there we are. Oops. Okay. Oh, so we're getting somewhere. Now this ah, it's a bit interesting. It hasn't covered in there. Hmm. So I'm just going to bring that up a bit. There we go. Right. We need another shadow in here. Probably a curve that way. I'm going to steal this one. Oops. Not to 
did not mean to do that. Okay. Alrighty, so need something to come around there. So I'm going to double. Sh it's good having the opacity because I want to double shadow some of this. That's what I mean in a bit. Okay, that should be there. Much. Good.
Okay, sorry, concentrating. Now, if make a shadow. And there. I'm going too far down with the eraser. It's hard when you move back between different software programs, you get into autopilot where everything is. Let's try that. No, that's a bit bigger. Okay. Alrighty, so this is what we've got. Need some tidying up. Now we can add a few more of these. But maybe not have them quite as dark. Let's see, dark blue. Ominous. Need another one of those somewhere. And Okay, oh, we will just have to take the border off there. There's something you forget. That's pretty much what I had in my head. Maybe it's a little bit more here, it's bugging me. Which is way too neat. So. Let me come in and add some reference to it. That's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our spooky pumpkin. Now, maybe to put a little bit more character in, I was thinking a bat could be good. So I'm just going to make a big bat and then I will shrink him down for her. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. 
There we go. And some wings. Actually, I might be bother doing that. Alrighty. So, going to go. First, I'm going to change the shape. Whoops. Theoretically, grab a handle. Make a knobbly bit. Like that. Okay, and then this bit should have sections like that. So, grab a circle. I actually did this the other day, so I could use my library of bat wings. Every time I make a new shape, I keep it in a library, so I don't have to keep making it. But I will show you how to do it this time. Those are a little bit big, so let's just pick all of them up and reduce them. Okay, now I've changed my angle too much. Okay, now I need a shape like that. Okay. We could clean out a lot of these anchor points, um, but I like this sort of irregular <laughs> cornice on them. It'll make it look a little bit more evil. All right, minus minus. Okay, dang it. to the buttons. Okay, so Thank you. 
Okay, so it's got a bit of a rough edge. Uh, but I like that, it adds to the character. I could tidy it all up a bit more. Um, oh, let's see. It doesn't compete too much. No, it's still competing too much. Hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, I could tidy all of these up, it's easy enough, I've shown you how, or you can do this really cool trick where you just cover everything, 100% opacity, go pure white, Okay. So that's one way you can tidy it up. And now we can just cut it. Edit our artboards. So if you do want to have a border, you don't have to. Okay, so that's the bit that will actually print out. Um, if you're a little bit anal retentive, you can just whisk these puppies in like this. That's got a sort of a photo feel to it, like you took a photo. <laughs> Alright, there's my spooky pumpkin. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.